Good morning and thank you all for joining us for this special joint news conference dedicated to the City of Erie's CRIS application. The City has a once in a lifetime opportunity to obtain a City Revitalization and Improvement Zone, CRIS for short, from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And we are excited to set aside politics, reach across the aisle, and work together on this. We are committed to leaving a legacy by doing what is best for our residents and our entire region. I will work with anyone who is driven to do the right thing for our residents for the long-term vision of the City of Erie. Since 2018, when we took office, the City has more than tripled our revolving loan fund for businesses. It was $6.2 million when we came into office. It's $21.5 million now. It successfully brought also, we successfully brought over $80 million in grant funding to implement initiatives here in Erie. This is extraordinary. However, we cannot rely on grants alone. One of Erie's challenges for decades has been that the city no longer has sustainable source of revenue to be used for economic and community development. The CRIS offers us an opportunity to have a reliable source of revenue every year. We have been working very closely with Senator Dan Laughlin and his team and our infinite Erie partners, including Erie Insurance, Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership, the Erie County Redevelopment Authority, and the Erie Community Foundation on preparing our CRIS application. There's been a lot of work going into that. We are following on the highly successful Lancaster model for their Senate. They had six appointees by the Senator and the Mayor had three. Over the last 10 years, they've brought in over $40 million, I think it's about $47 million, in new and existing business growth. We are, we are now bringing in about $10 million, they're now bringing in about $10 million per year to assist local businesses in their CRIS opportunity zones. This is an incredible opportunity for us. Senator Laughlin has graciously offered a 5-4 split to us. If our application is approved, Given that the vast majority of revenue coming into the CRIS will be from the state, we, will, we all agreed that Senator Laughlin, that he would have five appointments and the city would have four. In addition, like Lancaster, we will each appoint one non-voting member to serve as liaison to our offices. Now I'm very happy to introduce Senator Dan Laughlin to share his thoughts on CRIS. Senator Laughlin. Thought for sure I'd be able to do it without the reading glasses, but so be it, right? Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, for your efforts in this, and I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Uh, in my opinion, this is a pivotal day for the city of Erie, <clears throat> and it's no secret that I have been pushing for a CRIS zone for the city of Erie literally since the day I was sworn in, uh, and I have the letter with me to prove that if any of the press would care to see it. Uh, I'm confident that Governor Shapiro and his team will reopen the application window this fall as this administration is much more willing to offer these types of tools to our struggling cities and I had those conversations with him personally by the way. Uh, I have been working with the mayor, his team, and our business community to do the right thing for the residents of the city of Erie and quite frankly for the surrounding areas as well that will benefit from this. If we can speak with one voice to Harrisburg, and I mean that, with one voice, the governor told me that personally to my face, if you want this to go, we all need to be on the same page. Uh, we will be able to bring in roughly $10 million a year that can be leveraged for much more investments into the city's Erie, uh, of Erie's core. The vast majority of this comes from seven different state taxes that our businesses pay that can be brought back to the city's CRIS. The short list here is the corporate net income tax, the capital stock and franchise tax, the bank shares tax, the sales and use tax, the state hotel tax, personal income tax, and the malt or brewed beverage tax, and liquor taxes. <clears throat> Over the last 10 years, the city of Lancaster has been a model CRIS, 
bringing back more than $47 million in state revenue, the vast majority of which has been through state taxes. And they have leveraged this with another $130 million in private matching funds. And that's very important in a city like Erie because with, a, with an investment in a city where, you know, for every dollar you put in, you can sell it and get 50 cents back, that doesn't really work out for most investors. So it's very important to have some of the gap financing that this will provide. And this has been transformational for the city of Lancaster, and we know it will do the same here in Erie, but we have to have a qualified board to lead to Erie's Chris. And I want to just reemphasize that. We need a qualified board to lead the city's CRIS efforts. Now, I'd like to turn it over to James Grunke, the CEO of the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership, who has also been working with us on this application process. Thank you, James. First, I want to just thank the mayor and the senator for the leadership that they've provided to get us where we are today. Um, in 2019, we released a report that was called the Competitive Realities Report, and in it, it called for a reliable economic development infrastructure funding source. So we have been alongside Senator Laughlin ever since then calling for the creation of a CRIS in our community. And the CRIS is a powerful economic de development tool for the city that will en enable us to invest millions, not only to the urban core, but throughout the community. And it's vital, as the Senator said, that the board is comprised of a diverse group of subject matter experts with the experience that will take on a hands-on approach for their service. They will create a grant and loan program from businesses when the CRIS add residential commercial projects and use increment to pay down debt service on bonds and on privately secured loans. The CRIS funding can be used for industrial blight remediation and brownfield development, environmental cleanup and hazardous waste removal, real estate acquisition and soft costs related to the development, demolition, site prep, new construction, grants and loans for small businesses and entrepreneurs for facade improvements, equipment, expansion. And to be successful, as been mentioned, we need professionals and subject matter experts with the skills and qualifications to ensure our CRIS is the model for all of Pennsylvania. And we need skills in law, finance, creating capital stacks. Uh, it's not in my script, but the most complicated ca capital stack I'm aware of done in Erie was ECAP by Daria Devlin. Um, community development, planning, project management, project engineering, real estate development. We have many examples. Where we're standing for the East Side Renaissance is going to be an amazing transformation for our community. So we're so pleased to be a partner with the mayor and the center on this. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kim Thomas, who is the Executive Director of Infinite Erie. Thank you. Thank you, James. Good morning, everyone. I first, too, would like to extremely uh, express our gratitude and thanks um, on behalf of Infinite Erie and all of our partners for the mayor and the senator uh, for their bipartisan efforts and their support in helping us push this forward uh, for the city of Erie. We at Infinite Erie are really excited about this opportunity to add this tool as a catalyst for economic growth. As many of you know, Infinite Erie was created as a community development intermediary to provide assistance between transformational project development and funding, and to attract state and federal resources to implement Erie's investment playbook. Infinite Erie and the implementation of the investment playbook rely on this type of collaboration, on the public, private, philanthropic partnerships, and the coordination of resources. As James mentioned, a CRIS designation will provide a sustainable economic development tool to ensure that we have the resources to implement these transformational projects, to leverage the private and other public dollars, and to accelerate Erie's next renaissance. You've heard here already that a lot of work to date has already been done in preparation for application submission. However, there is still a significant amount more to be accomplished before the application window opens, which we are highly anticipating, cautiously optimistic uh, that that will happen in November, which is just a few short months away. 
in partnership with the City of Erie, Erie Insurance, Erie Community Foundation, the Erie County Redevelopment Authority, the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership, many, many others, we have begun to identify the 130-acre CRIS designation map, create the master business list, and hone our Infinite Erie Investment Playbook, which will serve as the economic development strategy for this application. Should we be successful in this endeavor, projects proposed in the application will be eligible for CRIS dollars. However, this is a tool that we hope to have for several decades to come. Projects will arise outside the initial plan that we submit, and the authority will submit those projects for state approval. The projects within the investment playbook, as many of you know, focus on equitable and inclusive growth, and they're committed to serving economically underserved areas and historically disadvantaged areas of our city. These communities need these investment tools to improve the quality of life for their residents. Currently, the map of the proposed designated CRIS area includes portions of the downtown and the bayfront, as well as commercial corridors on West 8th Street, 12th Street, Buffalo Road, East Erie, Federal Hill, and right here on Erie's Parade Street. Once we finalize this map, we must meet with every business in that footprint and get their approval to even be included in the CRIS. From that, we'll create that master business list of CRIS properties and we'll advertise that along with the map and the plan. We'll have a public meeting. So like I said, there's a lot of work still to be done in just a short amount of time, but we are truly excited about this wonderful opportunity for the city. I will say that it is imperative, and it's been touched on here before today, that we move forward in a unified way with an authority board made up of individuals with skill sets and expertise that have been outlined earlier. This will show Harrisburg, this will show the Shapiro administration that Erie is ready to manage this transformational investment. That's why Lancaster has been so successful and is bringing home tens of millions of state tax dollars to support its economic development efforts, money that otherwise would go into Pennsylvania's general fund. We must get this right. This is our opportunity right here today, right now. And with that, I will turn it over to Bishop Brock to say a few words about why this is such an important tool for the work that he is leading here on Parade Street. Bishop. Uh, good morning. Welcome to the Eastside Renaissance. Um, as you know, I've been working within this community for the last 43 years to bring about a sense of partnership, economic development, and anything that will help raise the quality of life for those who have been historically marginalized within our community. I want to thank uh, my two good friends, His Honor, uh, Mayor Schember, and of course, uh, Senator Dan Laughlin, because uh, we have walked the street together. This is not just some type of, of pious platitudes, um, but we have walked the streets together. We have walked these neighborhoods together. Uh, Senator Dan Laughlin, Ed Brzezinski, who was here, uh, Mel Witherspoon, who was here. We have literally walked this neighborhood around the Wallace Street, around uh, Parade Street, around German and Holland, uh, 22nd and, and Holland, places where there was uh, drug abuse and, and violence, et cetera, et cetera. We talked about this years ago. And Senator was always uh, optimistic and bringing about uh, people from different facets of life to come together to make something really positive happen within Erie, Pennsylvania. I think this is a glorious opportunity, and opportunities like this doesn't happen every day, and I am here to lend my support um, to Senator Dan Laughlin, the support of the East Side Renaissance and all that we do, the Eagles Nest Leadership Corporation and the Victory Christian Center uh, Cathedral, and all that we do to push this. It is imperative that we demonstrate a united front to Harrisburg and to the governor, which means that if we have to get behind closed doors and hash out what we need to hash out, which we have been doing, because this organization, us coming together, represents the totality of the citizenship of Erie, Pennsylvania. And I think it's about time that we demonstrate our unity together and make something phenomenal 
and transformational happening in Erie, Pennsylvania. So I want to thank you, Senator Dan Laughlin, for your leadership. I want to thank my, my great friend who works so um, diligently, effectively behind the scenes. He happens to be the uh, president and chief executive officer of Erie Insurance. And I want to introduce you all now to Mr. Tim Nicastro. Thank you, Bishop, and good morning, everybody. Your insurance is pleased to be part of the team collaborating to maximize our region's chances of a CRIS, a tool that would be transformational and benefit the people of our community for generations. As Senator Laughlin had mentioned, he's been pursuing a CRIS for nearly seven years now. I got to say, he's been kind of the hound of hell to me uh, for that entire time. It coincides with the seven years I've been uh, the president and CEO of your insurance. And I've been resisting, uh, resisting him uh, up until the current time when the Governor Shapiro took over and Dan was able to take and exploit a very tiny crack and get the Governor to continue to think about opening up for Erie. What Senator Laughlin, Mayor Schember, and I have long recognized and what has helped our team uh, at Erie Insurance working on this project for the past year is a significant portion of the CRIS dollars for Erie would be coming from taxes we already pay to the General Fund in Harrisburg. A CRIS could mean millions of dollars to help advance the transformational infinite Erie priorities Kim has just outlined. In fact, if enabled by state legislation, the city of Erie could see a CRIS contribution of $10 million or more from Erie Insurance alone in the first year of the program, including portions of our home office in the campus would represent the vast majority of the CRIS revenues in the first few years. If the state takes Erie's CRIS designation under consideration this fall, how we administer it will be critical to gaining approval we will need a functional and effective municipal authority overseeing the implementation of our CRIS program. And even before the application would be open, there's much work ahead for the authority to prepare, as Kim mentioned. Fortunately, Pennsylvania has an effective and successful model already in place in Lancaster, as you've heard earlier this morning. What Mayor Schember and Senator Laughlin are proposing tonight, or today, aligns with that structure and follows the proven model. This is the model Erie Insurance supports and under which we will agree to participate. A nine-member authority with five members appointed by the Senator and four members by Mayor Schember will ensure we have the right people around the table who have experience with projects of this magnitude and complexity. Again, this model has already proven to be effective and successful in Pennsylvania, and the state sees Lancaster's structure as an effective way to manage the programs and investments made possible by the CRIS program. The projects outlined through, this, uh, through the ongoing work of Infinite Erie ensure that we will move forward in the designated zone that will have a positive lasting impact on every citizen in the city and the surrounding region that we call home. Erie City Council and local, de local delegates, this is the time when we need to put politics aside and speak with one voice in Harrisburg. The reopening of the state's CRIS program and a CRIS designation for the city of Erie are far from a done deal. Implementing this proven model will demonstrate to Harrisburg the theory has done its homework and is united behind this opportunity. Erie Insurance supports the model being advanced by Senator Dan Laughlin and Mayor Joe Schember. It's a condition of our support and participation in the CRIS tool. We are all, are all convinced it will be crucial to the ongoing revitalization of our city. Without this proven structure and a viable CRIS, we will, of course, continue to pursue numerous other ways to leverage our tax dollars in Harrisburg. Our support of Erie, Pennsylvania will not wane regardless. But what a tremendous lost opportunity we would have if we let this crisis slip away. I'm hopeful the City Council will come together tonight to do the right thing for our community and help advance this important project. I'm going to now turn it back over to Mayor Schember and Senator Laughlin, who will introduce our candidates. Thank you very much. Thanks very much to all of our speakers so far. Very, very moving. I really, really appreciate it. And thanks to all of you for your leadership and support throughout this process. The last five months have been a whirlwind. Uh, speaking on behalf of the city, I don't think we can thank everyone here enough for all that you are doing to help us obtain CRIS designation and for your willingness to be part of the CRIS. I'm not exaggerating when I say we could not do this without everybody here in this room. The tax increment that we'll, we'll capture by Erie Insurance is what makes this all worthwhile. This is a tremendous gift to the city as it will make up the majority of what we're able to leverage. At tonight's meeting 
And on August 2nd, we'll ask City Council to pass the ordinance to create the City of Erie's CRIS authority and appoint the inaugural board so we can work together to expedite our application. We put politics aside and worked together with Senator Laughlin and our business community to appoint a qualified, well-rounded board. We've got that in place. We need council to approve it. We carefully selected each director based on their individual qualifications, the state's guidelines, and a diverse mix of skills needed to manage a complex project like this and initiatives that will take place during the CRIS. I want to personally thank uh, Councilman Mel Witherspoon and Councilman Ed Brzezinski, who are here with us, for their leadership in sponsoring and seconding the ordinance. We really appreciate that. As Kim mentioned, the first role of the board will be to help us complete a strong application. The board we selected has a breadth and depth of experience that will be invaluable as we move forward. Now I'd like to turn it over to Senator Laughlin to announce the candidates. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, since this is going to be a working board right out of the gate, uh, we work together, my office, the Mayor's office, Erie Insurance, and some of our other community partners, uh, to put together a slate of candidates that will have what it takes to lead a CRIS. They are all honored to serve, and we are happy to introduce the candidates for the Board of Directors for the City of Erie CRIS Authority. First, we have Emily Aloise, holds a master's degree in historic preservation. She serves in the Erie County Planning Department as the Transportation Planning Administrator. Emily administers the Erie Metropolitan Planning Organization, or MPO, and works with municipalities throughout Erie County to advance impactful projects and create safe, vibrant communities through transportation. David Brennan holds a bachelor's degree in architecture and has 33 years of experience in architecture. He currently serves as director of the Erie Office of Bostwick Design Partnership. And in addition to his practical experience in architecture, his qualifications include planning, project management, historic preservation, monitoring workflow, <coughs> and project budgets, client development, and knowledge of hazardous waste removal. He's also a former member of the Erie City Council, which uh, as we know, is uh, some useful skills around this time. Uh, we have Tony DeBreo, who serves as Vice President and Regional Officer of Sales for the Northeast Region of Erie Insurance. Tony holds a bachelor's degree in business and a master's degree in management, very important. He's a veteran in the United States Air Force and a board member of the Enterprise Development Fund of Erie County and the Minority Loan Approval Committee. We have Daria Devlin pretty closely with on some school issues. Uh, serves as Director of Social Impact at Hammett Health Foundation, Executive Director of the Erie Center for the Arts and Technology, known as ECAT, President of Erie School Board. She has experience in communications, program development, fundraising, facility needs, government relations, securing new market tax credits, supervising renovation projects, and managing budgets is very important as well. Uh, we have Matthew Good, serves as CEO of Housing and Neighborhood Development Service, also known as HANS. He previously served with the Regional Center for Workforce Excellence and as a PA state representative. He has vast experience in grant and proposal writing, contract compliance, project management, research, data analysis, community government relationships, real estate development, site identification, acquisition, zoning, planning, housing development, and construction. Pretty well-rounded. Uh, we also have William McLaughlin. He serves as the business manager at Laborers Local 603 since 2018. He has vast experience in construction, planning, scheduling, project management, supervision, work zone safety, and asbestos abatement, and brings his knowledge of direct field work to the table. And I felt that he was important to have on this board because we have a lot of smart people on this board, right? But we also need someone that's out there where the rubber meets the road and that can be built. Uh, we have Roger Richards on the board, the local attorney who's been instrumental in successful economic and community development projects throughout Erie County. Attorney Richards has vast experience in commercial banking, 
corporate finance, mergers, acquisitions, municipal finance, real estate finance, and tax-exempt finance. He has served as a solicitor of the Erie County Industrial Development Authority and the Erie County Redevelopment Authority. Katrina Vincent holds a master's degree in public administration. She is an assistant vice president and business banker at Marquette with extensive qualifications in economic development, legislative relations, corporate real estate, financing, grant development, marketing, public relations, project management, community development, entrepreneurship, and business development. She previously served at the Erie County Redevelopment Authority, Develop Erie, and also the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership. Finally, we have Matt Wachter, a local tax attorney who currently runs investment and finance for Carnegie Foundry. Attorney Wachter <coughs> has used his keen understanding of opportunity zones and historic tax credits to advance a $100 million transformation of downtown Erie already. <coughs> Erie, through his, in downtown, through his role as the Vice President of Finance and Development for the Erie Downtown Development Corporation. And it's not in the notes here, but I'm going to add this. When Erie got its eight federal opportunity zones, it was mostly because of Matt Walker. Guy reads tax code, believe it or not. He, <laughs> he called me. He says, you're not going to believe what I found, Dan. I said, you need to get after this. And uh, it's why the city of Erie got eight zones. And there's many areas throughout the state that didn't get any because uh, they didn't have Matt Walker helping them out. So I'd like to turn it back over to the mayor for kind of wrap this up. Thank you very much. Uh, this all-volunteer CRIS board is really dedicated to using their exp expertise to revitalizing our city. We have created a strong team with the right skills. We, have also, uh, we will also be appointing two non-voting members, each of us will appoint one, to represent our offices and there will be an administrative staff created as well. Together, this impressive team will ensure that our tax dollars are deployed on impactful projects and that benefit our residents for years and years. I'm going to say for decades to come, this is going to benefit us. As we move forward, we will continue to provide updates and share the 130-acre map, the master business list, and the Infinite Erie Investment Playbook strategy. We value our strong public-private non-partner nonprofit partnership and we will are committed to making to working together especially Dan and I are committed to this we're committed to working together to serve Erie and our residents we must submit an application with bipartisan support and a strong board we believe we are on the path to doing just that but we need to speak with one voice in Harrisburg as has been said several times here today if we're going to be successful we have to do that we hope you will all stand with us, and I believe you all are, and I really thank everyone for being here. We really appreciate that. So thanks for being with us today. That concludes this week's press conference, and everyone who spoke is now available for interviews. I'll say everybody in the room is now available for interviews. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> thank you much. <laughs>